right, now, this is just an amazing evening because I'm a very fortunate person in that I get to share with you two of my very best friends. We are going to have such a fun time tonight. The first friend I get to share with you, I've known her for so many years. She's an amazing storyteller. She's just such a precious person. Uh, she is uh, one of the funniest, sweetest, most wonderful human beings, and there is so much you can learn from her. She is in the Speaker Hall of Fame, as I am. She is... Uh, absolutely the epitome of what so many of you should aspire to be when it comes to a master of the stage. For more information about my great friend, Jane Jenkins Herlong, please turn your eyes to the video. Combining humor, truth, and her award-winning singing, get ready for an entertaining experience of personal productivity with a sense of humor and a greater sense of self. Please welcome Sirius XM humorist, Speaker Hall of Fame, and Amazon best-selling award-winning author, Jane Jenkins Herlong. Please applaud my friend, Jane Jenkins Herlong. I love this guy. Stand up, give her a round of applause. Thank you so much. I love this guy. Woo, y'all are awesome. How fun is this? Oh, I've had a ball. Here we go, fill in the blank. Forget your troubles and just get that y'all gotta do better than that. We gotta do that again. Forget your troubles and just get. Oh, I've been happy today being with Suzanne and Larry, my good friend, Randy coming up. This has been awesome. But I'm gonna tell you something. You can grow your business regardless where you live, and I'm living proof of that. Oh my goodness. Y'all, I live in a really small town in South Carolina. I fell in love and moved there with my sweetie. Ting! That's what happens when you fall in love. And my husband is with New York Life. And our town is so small, he shares his office with the funeral home. <laughs> Seriously. And I call the business New York Life or Death. <laughs> and I'll tell you something else I've learned. I'm inspired by the funeral home lady. She's 82 years old. I love Betty. And she can still put them down. <laughs> She's just great at what she does. And I like to talk to her. Please don't think this is morbid about funerals. I said, Betty, did you have a good funeral this week? She said, oh, my gosh, I got to tell you what happened. She said, you know, when they tell you to cut off your phones, cut off your phones. Seriously. She said, we are at the church, blended family, beautiful people. Everyone got along famously. The stepdaughters got her phone with her. She forgot to cut off her phone. And during the most reverend part of the whole service, when Betty goes to open the lid of the casket for the final viewing, this woman's cell phone went off, playing her favorite song from her favorite musical, The Wizard of Oz. <laughs> and this is what they heard. The witch is dead. Witch, oh witch, the wicked witch. <laughs> now, here's where sense of humor comes in. Betty went to the burial and looked at her and she said, Oh, honey, are you okay? And she said, If I only had a brain. <laughs> See, what I do in my speaking is I try to find humorous stories. I'm a southern humorist. And I, I like for them to make a point. And I like to find things and collect things to help me help other people be successful in what they do in life. So here I am, sitting in Sunday school class. My good friend, he tells a story. I love it. He said, I was 17 years old in boot camp. Knew I was going to miserably fail. And I just said, I need help. Oh, God, send me a message. He said, I got my message, Jane. At 17, not knowing a thing, God sent me a sign. I looked down at my dog tags, and it just said, be positive. <laughs> he said, I want you to know, I changed everything. I became passionate. I became a star recruit. Recruit, rather. I was a star and he said, one of my buddies came up to me and said, what in the world? 
What changed? He said, God sent me a message. He said, seriously, he said, look at my dog tags. Be positive. The guy said, seriously, look at my dog tags. Oh, negative. <laughs> but the point of it is, and it's a Zig Ziglar line, y'all, whether you think you can or you can't, what's going to happen? You're going to be right. That is so true. And I found success in the tomato field. Doesn't that sound weird? It's the simplest thing. I go back to that all the time. What happened was my daddy was a 10th grade educated farmer, and he was a hard worker. And I came up with this, don't throw tomatoes at my field of dreams. Because if you do, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to make ketchup, <laughs> salsa, and give me a Bloody Mary anytime. <laughs> Don't you dare. And this is what I learned in that tomato field. First thing you got to do is see what other people are doing. Check out your competition. I did that. I'd go in the fields real early, hot down in the low country of South Carolina, really hot. But I just wanted to see what everybody else was up to. That's why you're here, right? To get information to be better. So I went to the mothership of the tomatoes, Piggly Wiggly. <laughs> I mean, you know, you go where you want to, you get your info. You know what I'm saying? I got to be friends with the produce manager because he was in charge of the tomatoes. I said, let me see your tomatoes. They were ugly, dirty, filled with fertilizer. I said, this isn't happening on my watch. So... I went in that tomato field, and I picked those tomatoes, honey, and I washed them, and they were pretty. And I took them to my buddy. I said, how do you like them? He said, oh, wow. You know what I created at that moment, not even knowing what I was doing? The shine principle. How do you shine? What do you do best? Find your shine. The biggest mistakes speakers make is trying to find somebody else's shine and copy it. That is not going to work. Find your shine. Not even knowing how this was going to impact me as a little girl. I'll take you back to first grade. Y'all, I was ugly. I had lost my two front teeth. I was such a tomboy. And these lips, they have never changed size. Mama said, you grow into them. And I wore my corduroy pants and my flannel shirt. That's just every day. And the first grade teacher said, y'all look real cute tomorrow because the big high school girls are going to pick out the cutest little girls to be in the Little Miss Mary Christmas. Oh, that had my name all over it. So I brushed my gums, <laughs> wore the same thing, shined up my penny loafers. And I stood on that with all those other folks in the front of that classroom, and I grinned my heart out, and it was pitiful. And the harder I grinned, the more they laughed. No teeth and big lips. And I look like a boy. Oh, but standing next to me? Oh, please. Seriously? The princess of the class? Oh, yeah. Y'all know her. Deborah Drotty. <laughs> if you don't have one, get one. <laughs> well, her mama put a stick-out dress on her. Y'all know what I'm talking about? A stick-out dress. She had on her poodle socks and her black patent leather shoes. And who remembers the Avon tester tube that the Avon let? You, you remember that? Yes. Honey, she was ruby redded up. And her mama put those pink spongy rollers in her hair the night before. And as we say in the South, her hair was jacked up to Jesus. <laughs> and I could have made it possible for her to see Jesus because I was such a tomboy. I could have taken her down. <laughs> I was so irritated. And I wrote a book about that called Bury Me With My Pearls, and I talk about that grain of sand. That's what starts the pearl. Hello. Are you with me? Irritants define who you are. Be irritated enough to change, to try something different. Ugh. I tell you the truth. Of course, they picked her. Well, I don't know. Maybe it was just being reared on a farm, but something just got into me. So I walked up to that girl that laughed at me. She was on my school bus route. And I said, I can play the harmonica. She said, well, you could be in our pageant. And I went, I know. And y'all, I sat down on that school bus. 
And a big old tidal wave of fear just washed over me because I don't play the harmonica. <laughs> but let me tell you something really interesting. My brother was in high school. He stayed for a whole lot longer than he's supposed to. That's another story. But he said, we need a fish bowl. I had that. Had fish. Simon and Garfunkel. I didn't know what to do with them until I heard a song. Like a bridge of... So I just flushed them. It was important for me to get that fish bowl to my brother. As I went to that little beauty pageant, and I saw these girls with these updos. They were called beehives. Swishy dresses, matching shoes, long white gloves. Put their hand in my fishbowl. Honest to goodness, I thought I was going to die. Have you had the moment where your heart leaped out of your body and you said, I'm supposed to do this? And I just felt like a divine voice said, you're going to do this. I said, how? I have no teeth and we're broke. And we live in a tenant house. We don't have any money. But you know what? All things are possible. Because 17 years and five months later, I was walking across the stage of the Miss America pageant. The most unlikely person. Y'all need to clap better than that. <laughs> so sad to be an old beauty queen. <laughs> but you know what? I got to go back to that fishbowl. Because you might not have all the resources you need to move your business. But y'all, just like that little fishbowl, I made a contribution where I wanted to go. Do you understand what I'm saying? I didn't have a stick-out dress. I didn't have pool socks. I didn't have any of that. But I had a fishbowl. And that fishbowl meant the world to me. It started me putting one foot in front of the other. I started to find my shine. But let me tell you, when I was in the sixth grade, the teacher handed me all this junk. She said, this is your IQ. Don't you look? I thought, she is so stupid. I wish I hadn't looked because I found out I'm stupid. I mean, Forrest Gump's a lot smarter than me. And then I started teaching dyslexic children in high school. I got fired. They told me I was dyslexic. So I wanted to go to college. I took my PSAT, made the lowest score in the class. SAT, lowest score in the class. I mean, we're going the wrong way. You understand what I'm saying? The ACT, it wasn't much better. The DUMB, somebody help me here. Oh, it was awful. I didn't get in any place I wanted. I mean, Clemson, I remember I called Clemson University, and they said, Somebody left out your scores. Nobody could possibly score this low on an SAT. And then the guy said, does your daddy have any pull? And I said, he's got a John Deere. <laughs> I didn't know. I didn't know what he meant. One school gave me a maybe. I will take that. See, can you change your no to next? Can you think next when you hear no? I love it. I like to prove people wrong. So they said, we're going to interview you. Well, I drove to that college. I wore that man into the nub of the carpet. I couldn't even see him by the time I got through with him. He let me in on academic probation. I said, yes. I went to the tomato field. I said, Daddy, I got in. He said, I can't send you. I had a bad crop. I said, plant some cabbage. That always helped us get through hard times, really. So I went to Columbia College on cucumber rebate money because the crop was bad prayer and a grant and I was on the dean's list and went to graduate school <laughs> don't let anybody tell you no do not I'm living proof of that let me tell you the next thing I learned that tomato feel you got to get rid of to get better what's holding you back I'd look in that old bucket of tomatoes and if there's one that wasn't pretty I had to take it out and replace it. It's called the cull principle. What's holding you back? Only you know. If there's something in the back of your head that's bugging you, you know your rearview mirror is small for a reason. You know, there are people you might have to cull out of your life. That gets tough, but it'll be the best thing you ever did. Things can hold you back. If you don't cull, you know what's going to happen? You get dull. That's almost tweetable. <laughs> it's true. I want to tell you about my husband and myself. Went to Puerto Rico, had the most fabulous trip. Y'all, it was awesome. And all of a sudden, this woman walked up to us. She had the cutest dress, 
It was pleated, had little copper things. She had a little glass of courage, and she came up like this. And I said, that's a cute dress. This isn't pleasant. And I thought, and that dress is all of a sudden very tacky. <laughs> she cussed my husband out for everything he was worth. It was jaw-dropping. I just sat there going like this. And I said, Thomas, what'd you do to her? He said, I don't know. I said, what did he do to you? She said, he knows. <laughs> and that went back and forth and back and forth. And finally, she said something so incredible. She said, well, eight years ago, I said, stop the bus, girlfriend. You've been carrying this thing for eight years. Apparently, she was not voted to be in this conference or something or council my husband was a part of. And she couldn't get over it. Really, eight years ago, my husband's very principled. And he said, if I've done anything to offend you, I'm sorry. And she got better. She was so ugly. And I looked at her, and I really felt sorry for her. I said, Sugar, you okay? She said, yeah, I'm better. Are you a psychologist? I said, no, I'm a professional speaker, and I'm going to tell that story everywhere I go. <laughs> but let me tell you what happened to me. That thing jumped on me. We're walking back to the room. I'm going, I can't believe this. Thomas, what do you make of this? And you know what he said? This is why I married the man. He said, you know what, Jane? She's got a problem, and I'm not going to let her problem be my problem. That's why I married him. But I was furious at that because I wanted to talk it to death, ladies. <laughs> I had to get on my wheel of misfortune. Ride it good. Got back to the room. I'm firing up my laptop. I'm, I got to tell Sally, Mary, Dixie. I got to tell them all, Shirley. I got to let them all know what's going on. Oh, my children. Oh, I got to. See, I got to really relive this thing. Thomas was getting ready for bed, and he got in the bed, and I was so frustrated. I said, is that all you have to say? And he was, next thing out of his mouth, <laughs> sound asleep. Here's another principle you can take home with you. Along with the cull principle, getting rid of what's holding you back. There's a bumper sticker I saw one time, and it just simply said this, what if the hokey pokey really is what it's all about? <laughs> yes, it is. Because what? You put your right foot in. You do the right thing. Right foot out, right foot in. Then what do you do? So you shake it off, right? And you turn it around. And you learn a lesson. And guess what? You get better. It's your choice. Turn it around. Shake it off. But first you do the right thing. You got to call. The last principle I learned the let it go. Now, I don't care where you were. I know you're sick of this song. I know you've watched Frozen probably with your children. And I know you hate this song. But you got to admit, when you heard, let it go, let it go, can't take it anymore, let it go. I said, I love that song. There's something powerful in the let it go principle. Because even though we do everything we're supposed to do and work really hard, sometimes it doesn't work out the way we want it to. And sometimes it works out even better. It's the let it go principle. Now, I'm going to take you back to my days in the Miss America pageant because I did something real stupid. I lost myself. I lost my shine. I did not cull. I think the first part of your life you collect, the second part you get rid of. So I decided to be the generic image of Miss America. Hello, I'm Miss South Carolina. <laughs> that was pitiful. I felt like I had to be something I wasn't. Please do not be what you aren't. You will fall flat on your face. Be who you were beautifully created to be and use all those talents. You know what I say? Serve other people. Give it back, y'all. It's the highest calling. Oh, yeah, I got stupid. We're picking up state queens. Oh, I polished my little stance. I learned how to do that in a funeral home. Isn't it pretty? First girl we picked up was Miss New York. Now, I love accents. She got on that bus, and she said, instead of, Hi, how are you? I'm Miss New York. She said, Hello, I'm Miss New York. I said, Hello, I'm Miss South Carolina. 
we sound just alike. We have cloned ourselves. How pitiful is that? The next girl's Miss Georgia. Oh, I knew she's going to be the kid's little peach and say, How's your mama name? Uh uh. She said, Hello, I'm Miss Georgia. I said, Hello, I'm Miss South Carolina. Meet Miss New York. <laughs> oh, yeah. I gave up. We went down about five more stops and we pick up Miss Mississippi. She got on that bus. She didn't even know what a stance was that I worked so hard on in that funeral home. That was my coach. She slumped over and she said, Ha! I about died. <laughs> I'm Mississippi. Ha! Yeah! It just went on. Yeah! I mean, blocks. I got in my stance. I said, Oh, that's sad. She'll never win with that accent. <laughs> oh, honey, she won talent the first night. Then she won evening gown and then she won swimsuit. And we're standing on stage. Y'all was a NBC big deal. Burt Parks, last time you ever emceed. You're holding hands. People say, what do y'all talk about? <laughs> you don't talk. You lie. You look to the girl to the right. You lie so bad. You say, I hope you win. And the whole time you're thinking, I hope you trip. <laughs> and she's supposed to look back and go, oh, no, I want you to win. Oh, no, 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 I want you to be famous and rich. No, no, you can have it. That's so stupid. So it was all over. And I looked at her and I said, I hope you win, thinking she'd say it back to me. You know what she said? I'm gonna. <laughs> she said, I've been planning on being Miss America. And then Burt Park said, and the new Miss America is Miss Mississippi. She looked at me and she said, told you. <laughs> <laughs> but now people ask me, how'd you do it, Miss America? I'll tell you how I did. I did not win Miss America, but I married her boyfriend. <laughs> I'll tell you what. You see, it didn't turn out like I thought, but look, I got the ring, and it's a diamond. <laughs> she got the rhinestone crown. <laughs> so let me leave you with this. My mom and I were real close, and she told me, she said, I want you to celebrate your life and not be consumed with the spirit of grief. Because she was very sick, and, of course, I wrote the book in, in her memory and it was, it was tough, but I knew exactly what she was saying. Don't let the past hold you back from having an awesome future. You know, I've looked for the shine all my life in that tomato field. I've looked for the coal, the things to get rid of. Y'all, it's hard. Many times it's hard. You want to get really good at what you do. And, yeah, I had to learn to let things go. So she told me she's going to make me laugh. So she put stuff all over the house. And there was that one drawer I just hated to open. And I did, and it had a little envelope, and it said, Ellen, a Sunday school joke. My mama's never told a Sunday school joke in her life. She didn't even know what that is. That was code. So I read the little story. It said, a woman's getting on a bus. Got a real tight skirt on, trying to get that leg up on that bus. The people behind her, she's getting all nervous. Tries to lift her leg, could not get that leg up. She reached back, unzipped her skirt just a little bit. She's so nervous. She looks back again. She's like, I just can't do this. Tries to get that leg up. Still can't get it up. She unzips that skirt just a little bit more. Still couldn't get that leg up. She said, doggone it. She reaches back, unzips that skirt all the way down. She feels these strong hands on her waist, lifting her to the top of that stair. stairwell. She turns around. She said, how dare you be so fresh? He said, me fresh? You've unzipped my pants three times. <laughs> I have a gift for y'all. <laughs> you can hear that little story and lots more. If you text that number, I've got 23 minutes of comedy from Sirius XM Radio just for you. I hope you enjoy that. But I'm going to leave you with one of my favorite songs. Please remember that little tomato analogy. And when you're crafting your speeches, it doesn't have to be anything fantastically wonderful, jaw-dropping. Something as simple as working in a tomato field. And let me tell you, I wasn't a pageant girl, y'all. But the Miss America system represented everything I was not but knew I could become. Do you understand that? So think about that. Find your shine, call, let it go. You'll get better. Don't be bitter. The difference is the I, right? 
It's all about me, me, me. Be better. Grow. It's so wonderful that you're here and you're learning. But when you leave here today and the real work begins, don't let anybody rain on your parade. Nobody. Don't let anybody throw tomatoes at your field of dreams, right? Don't tell me not to live, just sit and putter. Light candy and the sun's a ball of butter. Don't bring around a cloud of rain on my parade. Don't tell me not to fly, I've simply got to. If someone takes a spill, it's me, it's not you. Don't bring around a cloud of rain on my parade. I'll march my band out. Your turn at that, sir. At least I didn't fake it, hat, sir. Guess I didn't make it, but whether I'm the rose of sheer perfection, a freckle on the nose of life's complexion, a Cinderella, or the apple of desire. I gotta fly once, I gotta try once, only can die once, right, sir? But life is juicy, juicy, and you see I gotta have my bite, sir. Get ready for me, love, cause I'm a comma. I simply gotta march, my heart's a drama. Don't bring around a cloud of rain on my parade. I'm gonna live and live now. Get what I want, I know how. One road for the whole shebang. One One gunshot and bam! Hey, 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 world, here you are. I'll march my band out. Just beat your drum. And if I'm fanned out, you'll turn. Sir, please, I didn't fake it, hat, sir. Guess I didn't make it. Get ready for me, love, cause I'm a comma. I simply gotta march my heart to drama. No, don't let nobody is gonna rain on you. God bless you. Thank you. Y'all are awesome. Thank you so much.